Even when they sometimes get it right, they oversimplify. In January 1781, and I'm quoting now from literally a brand new 2012 text just out this year. In January 1781, at the Battle of Cowpens in northwestern South Carolina, General Daniel Morgan inflicted a costly defeat on Colonel Bannister Tarleton, one of Cornwallis's most effective officers. Cornwallis pursued Morgan hotly, but the American rejoined Green, and at Guilford Courthouse they again inflicted heavy losses on the British. All of that is true, but that, that's their discussion of the war from Cowpens to Guilford Courthouse. Now what about Green's brilliant race to the Dan? The strategy that left Cornwallis's army 230 miles from its supply base in South Carolina in enemy territory in midwinter without adequate supplies among those that Cornwallis himself described as timid friends and inveterate rebels. Contemporaries of Lord Cornwallis knew the significance of what had happened. Sir Horace Walpole said, Lord Cornwallis has conquered his troops out of shoes and provisions and himself out of troops. <laughs> now, a textbook that is used in many of the universities in the 13 states has a three-page session, and this will be my last explication of a textbook, on the war in the South. One full page is to, one, I think I just lost the mic. There, there we go, okay. One full page is devoted to the artistic analysis of Trumbull's surrender of Cornwallis. There's a half a page map, just lost it, just lost it again. All right. Okay, can you hear me? No? Okay, all right. All right, I didn't get a PhD in engineering. Okay, you have a half, half a page, I mean, me, a full page of artistic analysis, a half a page map, which by the way is a beautiful map, unlike a couple of other books that have King's Mountain in the wrong state. <laughs> and then a half a page uh, of William Rennie's famous battle at Cowpens with William Washington and Bannister Tarleton. There is only one full page of written words of text describing the Southern campaign from Savannah to Yorktown. Now how can you expect people to understand what happened when you over uh, simplify? Now, alas, the bias of historians is not limited to what happened during the war itself. What happened before the war, leading up to the road to independence, whether you start at 1763, 1765, or 1770, and that varies from textbook to textbook, without exception, almost every text cites examples of colonial protest, petitions to king and parliament, boycotts, resolutions, and individual acts of patriotism from non-southern colonies. About the only Southern pre-Revolutionary War patriot that gets mentioned at all anymore is Patrick Henry. And then, in two of the textbooks, they're more interested in his opposition to Alexander Hamilton and his program after the war than they are to his famous comments on uh, the Virginia Resolves. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm demeaning actions that occurred in New England and the Middle Colonies. That is not the purpose. However, the American Revolution was an American revolution. So don't you think there should be examples cited elsewhere? 